we're going to get started with the sermon today, and uh, we're in the, whole, uh, the sermon series called the Holy Spirit, and we started a couple weeks ago with an introduction, just have you heard of the Holy Spirit, because some people have been Christians for many years and have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So we introduced the series with that, and uh, then last week uh, we talked about the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is a person of God, just like God the Father and God the Son, Jesus. Uh, the Holy Spirit is sent from God and sent from Jesus, and it's God's presence while Jesus is not here. He said, I go and I will not leave you comfortless. And we looked last week, we had these three slides that I'll show here um, with the basically the roles and the ways that we relate to God and their, and their different roles. God the Father is a provider and He's our healer and He's our banner. He's King of God all. And, and the scripture references there, but uh, and these are the names of God when He's serving in these roles. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah the Prophet, and Jehovah Nisi. God the Father. And then also in the Trinity is God the Son. And we relate to Him when we need salvation, when we need a mediator with the one who will judge. And when it comes time for our resurrection, it's Jesus, God the Son, that is the resurrection. And the third member of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. And we introduced the Holy Spirit's roles last week as He is our comforter, and he's the teacher, and he's he brings righteousness, peace, and joy. We're going to look at those in more detail today because we're looking at the mission of the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit's mission to us? Now, some people say that the Holy Spirit is not for today. You hear this uh, more and more in churches, at least in the South, that the Holy Spirit is not for today. And they would say, well, we have the Bible now, so there's really no need for the Holy Spirit to be active in our lives anymore because we can just take everything we need in Christianity from the Bible. And we are thankful for God's Word in that written form. Jesus said, I pray for not just these disciples, but for all people who come to know me through their Word. And that's, that's the Scripture that we have. They've, that's the written record of God speaking to us. But just because we have the Bible and we have that means of learning about God doesn't mean we need better instruction through God's hand Himself. So, so the Holy Spirit is still needed in our lives. Not, you know, just because we have the Bible does not mean, mean we don't need the Holy Spirit. And the point that I'd like to make here with these misconceptions is, is you'll find that churches will claim to believe in the Trinity and they'll tell you about God and they'll tell you about Jesus, but they won't talk about the Holy Spirit. And they, they, they talk about Him as though it's, it's, he's, there's no importance there. And they really devalue the Holy Spirit. And he's a member of the Trinity. The Trinity means three. So I, I've never figured out why they would do that. They believe in the Trinity, but they really, you know, pass off and dismiss a third member of the Trinity, which is the Holy Spirit. So, so I just wanted to, you know, make these, you know, statements just to let you know you're going to hear these things if you if you visit other churches, and uh, and these are misconceptions. And of course, we know that the Holy Spirit is here with us today and still active because the Holy Spirit is is instrumental in the process of of a person becoming a Christian in the first place. To become a Christian, you have to believe in the resurrection, that God raised Jesus from the dead. And you have to say that Jesus is your Lord and make that as a public statement, a public confession. And, and in 1 Corinthians, we read this the previous week. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit can ever say, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can really say, Jesus is my Lord, except uh, by and under the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. So, so this scripture enough should be sufficient evidence to let us know that the Holy Spirit is here, because 
if we can't say Jesus is Lord except through the Holy Spirit, and we have to make that public confession as part of our becoming a Christian and developing a relationship with God, then the Holy Spirit has to be here. He, he is for today. And He's more than this, though, because God sent Him on a mission. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. Jesus prayed for God to send the Holy Spirit into the world because He was going away. He said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. So He had a specific mission. He sent Him to be here in His absence. And you know, Jesus hasn't returned to earth yet in a bodily form. And so, you know, I pose this question, why would the Holy Spirit have, you know, disappeared or why isn't He for today? Because Jesus isn't back yet. Jesus left, I'm going to not leave you comfortless. The Holy Spirit came, but some people say, oh, well, He's not here anymore. The Holy Spirit's not around. He was only for the days of the apostles. Well, if Jesus isn't back yet, then we still need that comfort today. We still need the Holy Spirit today. And, and really, to, to, to really experience all of what Christianity is, all of what Jesus intended it to be, we need the Holy Spirit's purpose in our lives. We need to understand that purpose. To see Him and to know Him. Again, I'll recite this verse again because we looked at it in the previous week. Jesus said, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. And I will pray and He will give you another Comforter that He may abide with you for a few years. No, that's not what He said. He said He will abide with you forever. Forever, He is still here with us today. And verse 17 there is really important. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth Him. But you know Him, for He dwelleth in you and shall be in you. If we want to have the Holy Spirit in our lives, we need to be looking for Him. We need to see Him and we need to be able to recognize Him, to know Him. So if we want to have the Holy Spirit in our lives, we need to be actively thinking about you know, connecting with the Holy Spirit, with the Comforter, because this is what Jesus wanted, and this is what Jesus said we need. So the Holy Spirit is our Comforter. This is, one of the, this is part of the mission that Jesus sent in here was to comfort us. So in what ways do we need to be comforted? And you can write these down. There's space on your sheets if you want uh, to scribble some of these down. We'll look at these more in weeks to come. But if we need to be comforted, why do we need to be comforted? Well, these are just some that I, that I wrote down here. We need to be comforted when we don't know what to do. We can't see past Today, we can't really see into tomorrow. We can take guesses and we can make plans, but we don't know what's going to happen. There's sometimes we're facing situations we don't know what to do. The Holy Spirit can comfort us. Or when we don't know what's wrong. We know there's something not right with the situation, but we don't can't quite put our finger on it. We don't know what it is. The Holy Spirit can be our comforter that situation. Or when we are afraid of failure. We hesitate. We don't know which way to turn. But we can pray to God, but, but the Holy Spirit can bring us some assurance of what we need to do. If we know Him and we seek Him and we recognize Him, the Holy Spirit can comfort us. He can comfort us when we're sick. I thank God for doctors and I thank God has has them here and they're here to provide health for, for everyone. For Christians, we can't just depend on doctors. We don't just depend on doctors. There's some things that doctors cannot do. So, the Holy Spirit can comfort us in those times when we're sick. When we need something that the doctors can't give, nothing is impossible with God. But sometimes we face situations that just seem impossible. Impossible situations. 
The Holy Spirit can be our comfort in those situations. <coughs> Sometimes we fear the future. We don't know what's going to happen. And it causes us uneasiness and concern. Well, sometimes the Holy Spirit might need to give us a little glimpse as to what's to come or some reassurance about what's to come. And He can comfort us in that. There's a few more. If someone's trying to deceive us and it seems we're getting mixed messages or it seems we're being pulled from one way or the other, if that's causing us concern, we pray and God can have the Holy Spirit give us a little insight can give us some direction. When someone's trying to deceive us, the Holy Spirit can comfort us, maybe help us figure things out. And sometimes we face with situations where we just don't know what to pray for. We don't know how to pray. The Holy Spirit can help us in those situations. Or when we don't understand what God's will is, what God's will is in our life, the Holy Spirit can comfort us there. We'll look at, we'll look at these more in, in weeks to come. What situations have you faced where you just didn't know what to do or needed some comfort? The Holy Spirit is here to do that. And as Christians, we can you know, pray to God. God is our provider. So we pray and we tell God what we need and He can send the Holy Spirit to help us through that situation. Now, if we've done something sinful, if we've, if we've got some sin in our lives, we've, we've made some wrong choices, and we've done wrong, though sometimes praying to God, our provider, there seems to be an obstacle there. We feel uneasiness when we've done something wrong. Let's talk about this just for a second. Hebrews chapter 10, 26 to 27. This is from a Good News translation. Although it might not seem like much good news, because it says if we purposely go on sinning after the truth has been made known to us, all that's left is to wait in fear for the coming judgment. The fierce fire that will destroy those who oppose God. That's how we can feel if we've got sin in our lives. If we've done something wrong, it seems like human tendency is we want to go hide. Like Adam and Eve, when they sinned in the Garden of Eden, they went and hid themselves. And God came out and said, where are you, Adam? We have a tendency to want to go hide, crawl under a rock. Sometimes we get this idea in our head that we can't be forgiven for what we've done. That we've done something so bad that God can't forgive us. The Holy Spirit can comfort us in those times. 1 John chapter 3, 19 to 21. I'm going to read this out of the CEV. When we love others, we know that we belong to the truth and we feel at ease in the presence of God. But even if we don't feel at ease, God is greater than our feelings and He knows everything. So when we've sinned, we don't feel like being in God's presence. We feel like if we go to God, we might get punished as opposed to getting consolation. We don't feel at ease. But the Holy Spirit can comfort us in this way. He says, we feel at ease in the presence of God. We have the courage to come near Him. The Holy Spirit can remind us that sin has been paid for in the cross. He can remind us that we can come to God even when we feel like we can't. The Holy Spirit can comfort us in that way. So the Holy Spirit is our comforter. There's so many things that we face in this life that we need comfort for. The Holy Spirit can comfort us. Let's move on to the second part of the Holy Spirit's mission, that He is our teacher. What does it mean to be taught? First of all, let's answer that question. Well, it means to receive instruction. So you're gaining new knowledge. But to be taught also means, how do I, what do I do with this knowledge that I have? How do I apply it to my life? What is, 
can I take this lesson and actually make it come alive in my life and be part of my actions? So to be taught is to apply those lessons that are learned. And, and we develop our mind. When a child enters school, very immature, doesn't know very much, and the longer they learn, or if they're apprenticed by someone for a skill or trade, the longer they learn, their mind develops. They begin to think deeper thoughts. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. My mind developed. So if the Holy Spirit is our teacher, we should see our mind develop as well. So I'm going to read a few passages here related to this. Um, John chapter 16, verses 8 through 11. I'm reading this from the message, so this is a paraphrase. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, says, when He comes, He'll expose the error of the godless world's view of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He'll show them that their refusal to believe in Me is their basic sin. That righteousness comes from above where I am with the Father. And out of their sight and control. Judgment takes place as the ruler of this godless world is brought to trial and convicted. If the Holy Spirit is teaching us these things, when you, when you learn something new, you might think about something a certain way, and you realize as part of that instruction that you, you're thinking about that incorrectly. We might think that the world works a certain way. But when we learn how things really work, really what's happening is the, the incorrect thinking that we have is being corrected. We're being taught. Our, we're learning something new. We're gaining instruction. So when he comes, he'll expose the air. Some people think that the reason things are the way they are is God is in heaven and he's wanting to throw down lightning bolts on us and he, and he hates us and he wants to destroy us and he wants to judge us and condemn us. And that's not who God is at all. That's not who God is at all. So when we receive instruction we begin to learn the correct things, that God loves the world, and He loved the world so much that He gave His Son. People don't realize just how much God loves them. They don't have to hide from Him. They don't have to run from Him. If we can learn to run to God, that's really where we need to be. The comfort which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, He shall teach you all things and look at this, he'll bring things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you, Jesus said. So Jesus, when he was here, he spoke on many different things. You read the, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5 through 7. He was instructing different people on things that would help them with their lives. To soldiers, he said, be content with your wages, for example. You're going to get paid, but you're going to get paid. And if you're upset about it, you're causing yourself distress. But if you accept what you receive and you say, thank you, Lord, for it, then first of all, you're going to be more at peace and ease. Well, this is the lesson of Jesus, but Jesus then said, you know, He's going away. He's not going to leave you comfortless. Well, the Holy Spirit, one of the things He's going to do is teach us and He's going to help us learn to apply those lessons. So one of the jobs that the Holy Spirit has is He's going to bring to our remembrance, He's going to help us remember when we read something in Scripture that Jesus said that's going to help us down the road. We might be distressed and something's going wrong, and, and then, wow, I just, I, it just came to me that there, you know, this is what Jesus says about this situation. And we can have peace, and we can get comfort from that. So the Holy Spirit teaches us and helps us to apply those lessons that Jesus was teaching. That's part of His job. Finally, Romans chapter two, verse Romans chapter twelve, verse two. I'll read this from the New King James Version. Paul said, "Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind." Remember, teaching is growing your mind. Expanding your mind. Well, this is the Holy Spirit teaching us. Don't be conformed to this world. Allow the Holy Spirit to transform us. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Receive His instruction 
and let it grow you. Let it develop you. This is part of His job. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us and we, we, we take those lessons and we apply them as He brings them back to our remembrance, He is changing us and renewing us and growing us in our mind. So the mission of the Holy Spirit is to be our teacher. A third and final we're going to talk about today is the Holy Spirit. One of His very important jobs is He is our sanctifier. Sanctifier. You may not be familiar with that word. What does it mean to be sanctified? What is sanctification? Well, it means a few different things. It means to be set apart or destined for a purpose. In the Old Testament, when they was describing how they how the Jews would set up their temple, they would they would take gold instruments, things that they would use as part of their worship, bowls and basins, and they would sanctify them. They would set them apart for a particular purpose. If they went and captured a city and they, they, the, the plunders were gold and so on, if those were dedicated to the Lord, they would, they would repurpose them and they were set aside. The gold would be set aside for that purpose. So to be sanctified is to be set apart and destined for a purpose. And it undergoes a process of purification. Those Jews would not have brought something into their temple unless it had been purified because they were presenting them to a holy God. But we can also undergo a process of purification. That is, when we become a Christian, we still have our old habits, some of our old traits, and, and it's a process to become pure and to live a holy life. And to be, sanct to be sanctified also means that you the righteousness that is in Christ is applied to us. Sanctification and holiness go hand in hand. You can say they're synonyms for one another. But the holiness doesn't come from us. We'll look at that in just a minute. We'll look at a couple of scriptures here. Remember, to be sanctified means you're set apart for a purpose. So here is Romans chapter 8, verses 29 to 30. I'll read this out of Young's literal, Wild T. Because whom he did foreknow, he did also forepoint. Some translations, it's that word is predestined. For whom he did foreknow, he did also forepoint or predestined conform to the image of His Son that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. So we're destined for the purpose to be conformed to the image of Christ. Christ's perfect life is our model and we are destined to become like Christ. And whom He did forepoint, these He also did call. And whom He did call, these He declared Righteous. Again, being sanctified means the righteousness of Christ is being applied to us in a process. And whom He declared righteous, He also did glorify. Ezekiel chapter 36, 27, verses 26 and 27 are the New Living Translation, NLT. This is the Old Testament. God says through the prophet, that I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. This is the Holy Spirit He's talking about. He says, I will take your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you may follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. That's the Old Testament way of saying to be righteous, to be holy was to follow the law in those days. Well, today we receive the righteousness of Christ. But you remember Jesus said that the Holy Spirit, He is with you, but He will be in you. And He was talking about this very same thing that God the Father here was saying to the prophet. God was going to put the Spirit in us 
to transform us, to help us to be this type of person who follows decrees and the regulations, or to be the righteousness. So even in the Old Testament, this, is, this was God's intention and purpose. And the New Life Version in LV, Hebrews chapter 12, 14, says, Be at peace with all men and live a holy life. No one will see the Lord without having that kind of life. Other translations say it like this, Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. A lot of people don't like to talk about holiness these days, but it is vital that we have holiness, that we be a holy people. But this is not something that's coming from within ourselves. This is not... I mean, we, we apply ourselves and we have, to, we have to resist temptation, resist the devil. But it's a process that we're undergoing that the Holy Spirit is carrying us that we have a holy life. Holiness is not dressing in a particular kind of clothing and living on a communal farm or... Saying your Hail Marys over and over and over again, this is not holiness. But allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us and apply Christ's righteousness to us makes us holy. And the other part that we're going to look at today is part of sanctification is this verse in Romans we'll look at in just a second where it says, where it talks about righteousness, peace, and joy. Now again, righteousness is not those things that we do on the outward appearance. Although, when we're holy on the inside, it will begin to come out on the outside. But it's important to realize that the holiness and the, and the sanctification is not something that we're doing ourselves. It's not following a list of rules. It's not the do's and don'ts of the law. But it's about Christ's righteousness being a to us and sanctification being a process that He is transforming us. Our, we're being renewed in our mind to become the holy people that God intended for Himself. Now, when we look at this verse on righteousness, peace, and joy, in the King James it uses this reference meat and drink. And meat and drink is the do's and the don'ts, okay? So think do's and don'ts when you see the meat and drink. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is what John was here to announce, and this is what Jesus was here to announce, that the kingdom of God is here. And that kingdom of God is not following the rules of the do's and don'ts. It's not about, it's not about that. It's about allowing the righteousness of Christ to come into us and the peace and the joy. There's another translation I'll read here. Common English version. Contemporary English version, sorry. C-E-V. Romans chapter 14, 17. Let me read it from this translation. God's kingdom isn't about eating and drinking. It's about pleasing God and about living in peace and about true happiness. And all this comes from the Holy Spirit. How can I say the Holy Spirit is not for today? We need the Holy Spirit in our lives to let this righteousness come forth. We have to have the Holy Spirit in order to enjoy the peace that that brings. Peace in our soul when we know that we can come to God and we can bring our cares and concerns to Him. And true happiness. You know, it amazes me that people accumulate all kinds of wealth and become very famous Everything that the world desires, some people obtain that. And yet you see those people have deep troubles. Why is it that celebrities have to go into rehab and they, their children overdose on drugs and, the, and, they, and, and they have all these ups and downs? It's because there's not true happiness there. Those things seem nice. But yet, that's not where true happiness is. True happiness is allowing the Holy Spirit to be in our lives. So let me ask this morning, those of you watching through recording on the, the internet, ask yourself, 
Is your life pleasing to God? Do you have peace in your heart? Or are you troubled? Do you wait in fear that God's going to judge you? Is that, is that how your life is? Do you have true happiness in your life? And these are things that we, deep down inside, isn't this what we want? Well, I want to tell you today, you can make things right with God. You can make them right. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. This is from NIV. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's with your heart you believe, and you're justified. And it's with your mouth that you're confessed and you're saved. So today, if you want the Holy Spirit in your life, if you want the Holy Spirit to lead you to where you can have peace and true joy and, and God's righteousness in your life, you can have those things. The Holy Spirit is ready to comfort you if you just got to ask and invite Him in. Believe in the resurrection. God raised Jesus from the dead. He's alive. And because Jesus is alive, we make Him the Lord of our life and say, Jesus, You're my Lord. Jesus is Lord. And tell somebody, if you believe in your heart and you say it with your mouth, according to the Word, you have a relationship with God. And the Holy Spirit will comfort you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to You right now. Lord, I pray for everyone who's listening to this message under the sound of my voice. Father, I pray right now for them, Lord, that you'll help them make that decision right now. Why have trouble? Why have fear? Why hide from God? Run to God. Lord, help them to make that decision to run to you and not away from you. Help them make that decision to believe in what they hear. That you raised Jesus from the dead. He's not still in the grave. He is alive. Lord, we make Him our Lord today. We set Him in our hearts higher than everything else. And we'll follow Him and His teaching. Father, I pray that everyone who hears would be convinced in their heart that they want to follow Jesus. I thank you today for everyone who accepts you. And Lord, I pray for them. Lord, even as Jesus prayed for them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.